Hello, I'm Andy Sims. And I'm Ryan McCord. We're from the Guildhall at SMU Cohort 16, and today we're going to talk to you about... Unreal Script, specifically creating a basic player ability. So, today we're going to create a player ability that allows your the player character to heal itself whenever you press the H key in-game. While we go through this example, you'll be learning a bunch of new things. Mainly, creating classes through extension, handling player input, how to bind a function to a key press, and then most, of of, most importantly, we're going to cover all of the steps involved in actually getting that, function, that functionality working in UDK. All right, so before we jump in and just start coding, we really have to have a plan. Unreal Engine is pretty complex, and just trying to dive in and do coding on the fly is generally not a good idea. You really need to know what classes uh, you need to prepare in order to get your game functionality working properly. In particular for this ability, uh, our heal ability, you're going to need to operate on three main classes. The player controller, which is the class that handles all input for the player, uh, it controls movement, firing, all kind of the basic functionality that player input handles in an Unreal game. The pawn class, which actually represents those actions in game, the player controller sends information from the pawn class or from the player controller to the pawn, telling it what to do on a moment by moment basis. And then lastly, we're going to adjust the game info. Uh, class, which handles our basic game rules. Basically, we're going to go in and tell game info, hey, we've got some new rules for you to take account of, and uh, here they are. All right, so to start, we are going to go in and we are going to make a new player controller because we need to add in our new functionality that we're going to have for accepting new input, such as the H key, to create our heal ability. So we're going to go in and I'm going to name this file UST player controller. I made sure to select Unreal Script file here. So now I'm in and the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm not extending the object class. I'm actually creating an extension of the already defined class player controller. As you can see, my IntelliSense is already picking up that we've got a class there in the uh, Unreal Script source, and so that grabs onto that. The next thing I'm going to want to do is to define a function that's going to accept the input of my key. So when I press my H key, it's going to call a function, and that's what this function is. In this case, this function is going to have a special keyword called exec. Exec functions, basically their, their entire purpose is when you press a key binding, they execute. Uh, the player can, an exec function can't be put in every single class, but in the case of the player controller, this is one of the very special classes that can allow exec functions. So we're going to start out by saying exec to specify our function, then actually call out function, and we'll call our function cast heal. Then we're going to go in and we will identify that we are going to talk to a new class called USTPawn that is an extended version of the original pawn class and that we are going to tell it to cast heal, a new ability that it has. So we're, not only are we creating a cast heal function within our player controller, but we are going to create a new class called UST Pawn, and we are going to give it an ability called cast heal. So we just close that up, and then we're all set for our UST player controller class. So my next step is to create an extension of the Pawn class. As you can see, we've already defined a class called UST Pawn here, and we need to actually go in and uh, fill that out. So I'm going to go to my Unreal Script tutorial again and add a new file. Unreal Script, and this time I'm going to name it UST Pawn. Alright, 
So, now we've got our new class, and once again, we want to make sure we're not actually extending from object in this case. This is just the default. We're going to actually extend this time from utpawn. utpawn is a class that uh, basically controls movements for Unreal Tournament characters. It's a little bit more sophisticated than the standard base pawn class. Um, it has additional functionality for Unreal Tournament AIs. Um, so we're going to steal from that because we like having that added functionality in there. Um, Alright, so our next step is now we've got to go s about setting up all of the pieces of our heal ability that's going to exist within our UT pawn. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to establish a variable that will store the amount of health that will be regenerated whenever we cast our new ability. So I'm going to call this uh, just make it a var float regen amount. Now, an important thing to note here is that variables must be declared at the beginning of a class, but they cannot be assigned an initial value at this point. That's what we have to go in and do a default properties for. So we're going to go into our default properties, and we're going to select regen amount, and we'll set this to 25. So in the case that we cast our ability, it is going to heal our player by 25. Now we need to actually create the function itself. So we're going to use the function keyword to call it out. And as we already specified in the other in the player controller class, we're going to call this function cast heal. Then we are actually going to call a pre-built function within the pawn class called heal damage. Now, heal damage is a function uh, is kind of the polar opposite of a take damage function that a pawn has for when it is hit by a projectile in game. And instead, heal damage would be in the case that it were a core or something in like a warfare map where it was actually being repaired, or in the sense that a pawn picked up a health pickup. This would be the function that is called. So this is basically a built-in function that allows us to access the pawn's health and change it. So I'm going to put in here, and I have a couple different parameters that I need to put in. Uh, the first one is the actual amount that is being healed. So I'm going to put in my regen amount variable here, which will basically tell it every single time I want to heal, I want to heal for 25. Next, I want to specify its controller. In this case, the pawn already has a predefined type called controller that will, that will automatically reference the controller that is possessing that pawn. So all I need to do here is put the word controller in. Last, it's going to ask me for a class type of damage type. In this case, this is just metadata. Um, it's generally unused by the function, and I can just send it a fact that I'm just going to give it a class type that is of damage type. And it can take that and it'll be fine. So we just finish that out. All right. So in this, at this point, we have our new heal ability all set. So when we call it, our pawn, controlled by the player, is going to be healed 25 points. So I finished up my extension of the pawn class. But in order to make sure that my extended version of the pawn class and the player controller are both used by UDK, I need to make sure that the game info of my current level knows how to use those extended classes. So I'm going to have to write an extension of the game info class. So I'm going to go back up here and we're going to create a new file, Unreal Script file, and for this case I'm going to call it Unreal Script Tutorial, or uh, USC. So once again, Unreal Script file, select and add. So, once again, at the top, we are not extending from object. This time, we are going to be extending from UT Deathmatch. UT Deathmatch is an extension of the original game info type. It basically controls all of the rules for a standard Unreal Tournament Deathmatch, um, handles tracking kills, um, time remaining, that sort of thing. So we're going to take that functionality and we're going to add in and tell it, hey, we've got some new rules that we want you to follow, um, so keep track of these. So within our default properties, we're going to tell it that some of the defaults that it 
thinks are normal have changed. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to say, hey, you have a default new pawn class. I'm going to tell it that that class is equal to Unreal Script Tutorial, which is the name of our uh, package here, of our solution, dot USD pawn. So now it's going to know, hey, there's a new type here of pawn that's called UST pawn, and I need to recognize that as the default cl pawn class, not the standard pawn class. And secondly, we're going to have to go in and do the same thing for our player controller. So we're going to come in and we're going to say default controller class equal to class and then same thing. Unreal script tutorial dot UST player controller. So at this point now our Unreal our Unreal game is going to know that we've created these two new classes and that they're ready to be used in lieu of their traditional of the traditional pawn and the traditional player controller. So we're all we're all set on this count. Now our functions, our classes are ready to use. So we're finished up with our Unreal script, but our job really isn't done. The one thing that we are left to do is we haven't actually made our key binding yet. And that actually isn't handled in Unreal Script. It's handled in a configuration file, a .ini file, in UDK. So we're going to keep our Unreal Script up, script up here. But I'm going to open this up. And as you can see, I've already routed to my UDK, UDK version, then UDK game, and then config. Now I'm going to find my UDK input ini file and I'm going to open that up and just you can open that with any standard text editor um, just open up a notepad and now this is a list of all of the bindings for different commands that can be called in the Unreal console and we are going to have in order to make our heal ability functional we have to add in a command of our own so I'm just going to scroll down to the bottom of this first bindings list and I'm going to put in a new custom binding for us. Now in this case, I've already checked that the H binding isn't taken. Um, if it were, I'd have to go in and find the thing that was taking the H binding and remove it. But in this case, we're good. I can just put our line in and we can be done. So I just start out with the keyword bindings equal to, and then in parentheses, I put name equal to, and then this is where the actual binding goes. You just specify in parentheses or in quotations the key then comma and then you actually give the name of the function that you want to call what this is going to do is it's going to search through the controllers all those classes that can handle those ex special exec functions it's going to search and it's going to find an exec function with this name and it's going to perform that function so now I've made it so that whenever I press my H key, I'm going to run my exec function cast heal that's in my UST player controller. So I'm just going to save this up and we are going to be ready to test. Alright, so we're doing our testing and actually behind the scenes I went back and tried to run our executable and unfortunately enough we actually had a bug in our code um, I made a couple of grave errors and I'm going to show you right now how to fix them and how to avoid them in the future. So first off, my first problem that I made was that we didn't make sure to put all of our Unreal classes are into the classes folder. A couple of times during the video I went up and whimsically put in a new class and assigned it to the solution and not the folder. And the problem with that is that Unreal needs to look specifically for its scripting clauses in the classes folder and if they aren't there it won't detect they're there so if if you have that in your code just go ahead and I move the classes back into their proper folder so that we can run as usual also another strange bug that I found when implementing the seal ability was that in the UST player controller if you have 
extends as player controller and not UT player controller, you'll receive a strange bug where you have a both third person and first person view occurring at the same time. And that's why we need to make sure that when we're pulling our classes, uh, that we're always making sure to pull the right one because otherwise you can get class confusion where some of our functions are pulling from UT fun functionality and some of them are pulling from UDK lower level functionality and they get a mismatch and you get weird bugs like that. So that was a mess up on my part, but go ahead and fix that in. Put UT player controller here and make sure your classes are properly within the classes directory. Then, in order to actually test our finished mod, we're going to have to go to our solution and go to properties, and then go to the debug tab. From here, we want to make sure that when we load up our stuff, if you already have the infringe set up all set to go, we need to make sure that we load up the proper map and the proper game type. In this case, we want to run DM Deck, which is a standard Unreal Tournament map, and then we are going to run Unreal Script Tutorial dot Unreal Script Tutorial. Unreal Script Tutorial being our overall package name, and then dot afterwards Unreal Script Tutorial being the name of the new game type that we've created. So we want it to run within the package the specific game type. So we're going to go ahead, we have all our settings set, we fixed those bugs, and now we're going to go ahead and run our game and see if this thing actually works. So we're running in, we've got my log here on the left, and Unreal, the Unreal Splash. So it's just taking its sweet, its sweet moment to load on up. Alright, so we're in the game, and everything seems to be working. I'm going to go ahead and click Fire to activate. So now I'm in game, uh, everything seems to be working properly, I can fire my weapon. So let's go ahead and get my player character dealt some damage. Uh, and that way we can test if our ability is actually working. So I've now been hit by a link gun and my health has been reduced to 81%. So I'm going to hit my HP to see if that ability works. And we are instantly back up to 100% health. So our heal ability is fully functioning. I can go ahead and run around here to take damage. And sure enough, as soon as I hit my HP again, we're healed. Alright, so now we have a completely functioning heal ability in UDK. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you learned much.